Hello everyone. So in this video, let us talk about all the four problems from the latest lead code weekly contest 291. So let's start. Okay. So the first problem is remove digits from the number to maximize the result. So the problem statement is very simple. It states that you are given a string known as number as well as a character known as digit. Now return the resulting string after removing exactly one occurrence of that digit from the number such that the value of the resulting string in the decimal form is as maximum as possible. So whatever number you have, you have to remove like at most. So you have to remove like exactly one occurrence of this particular character, like the current digit from this particular number and return the number, whatever number is there, uh, such that the number that is formed is as maximum as possible. So now they can multiple ways to solve this problem out. But what you can think here is that let's say that there is some number that is five nine nine five okay now what you can see here is that if i want to remove a five then it is better to remove this five because then the number will become nine nine five and the other case can be that the number can become five nine nine if you remove the last five now in this case obviously this number will become bigger than this number so obviously this this is chosen so in this case, I have removed the first number, but the other case can be, let's say that the number like this one, nine, nine, one, or not one, nine, nine, one. Let us say that the number is one, one, nine, nine. So if I want to remove nine in this example, the, the two cases can be that I can remove like this, the first nine or the last nine. So the number will become like this. In this case, what you can see is that I, it is better to remove the last nine because the number will become this and that is bigger than this number. So it, it, it means that there, there can be multiple cases. Like you can remove the middle line, first nine, last nine, anything. So they can be multiple ways. And also the example length or the number length is very small. So it means that you can do this in a very brute force way by brute force way. I means that you can form all the possible strings that can be formed by removing at most one digit that is of the given character type like whatever given a digit you have, just remove that and form the new string. And you have now all the strings possible. Now you can just sort out the strings and whatever is the maximum string that is the maximum number just print out that particular answer. That's all the logic for here. So what I've done here is that this is a vector of strings that will be formed while removing out the particular one occurrence of the particular digit that I want to remove. Then I'm iterating over all the like digits over this number. Whenever I find out that, okay, the, the digit I want to remove is this particular digit. So number of i, the ith digit from the number becomes equal to the digit that I want to remove. I'll form a new substring. Now a new substring can be, so let's say that the digit I have or number I have is five, nine, three, nine, five. And I want to remove nine from this. So I will be treating over this number whenever I find out a nine, which means that I can remove out this nine. So if I remove out this nine, the number will be formed as the substring from this to this and this to this. So I will remove out this particular nine and form the substring that is five, three, nine, five. Other case can be that I will remove this nine. So the other case can be if I move out this, if I remove out this nine, the case can be that the substring can become like this. You can attach these two substrings. So it, will, it will become like five, nine, three, five. So these are two possible numbers and I will just sort out all the numbers and whatever is the maximum number, I will just return on the answer. So I will be like, attaching two substrings like from zero till the particular ith element and from i plus one because i've improved like ignoring the ith element so i plus one till end attaching to these substrings from the like push this particular new number in this v vector then sorting it from decreasing to decreasing because i'm using r begin so it's like reverse begin so from decreasing to decreasing it is sorted and decreasing to increasing which means that the first number is the largest so i'll just return the first number in this vector that we have so that's the overall logic for the first problem cool Moving on to the second problem. The second problem is minimum consecutive cards to pick up. Now in this problem statement, you are given that you are given an integer array cards and the cards array is given to you. Now what you actually have to return is that return the minimum number of consecutive cards that you have to pick up. Now consecutive cards you have to pick up such that there exists a matching pair of cards in that particular section that you have picked up. So in, in this example, as you can see that, uh, you have to find the minimum consecutive card. So in this example, if you pick up cards from three till the three, four, two, three. So these four consecutive cards, if you pick up, then in this scenario, you can see that I have a pair formed as three, three, and that can be like very good. So 
which means that I have to find out consecutive cards, like minimum the consecutive cards I should pick up so that that consecutive card should have one pair of matching elements. Now they can multiple approaches to solve this problem as well. But what you can directly see here is that I just want the occurrences of the same numbers. So first I want to somehow know that at which position three is stored. So because if I know that three is stored at zero, the index five, index 100, index and so on. So if I know the indexes of three, I can easily find out the differences. Like what is the difference between two consecutive indexes? Because if I want to form, let's say a consecutive cards I want to pick up, I want to ensure that these two cards are there. Okay. So let's say if I want to ensure that two threes are there, I want to pick up all the cards between two occurrences of three. So if I have multiple threes like this, so if, if I have three, then there are some cards and there's, there are three and there's some cards and there are three. So if I know that this index is occurring at zero index, this is at 50 and this is at 70 in the particular number I have. So if I take out all the consecutive cards between this, then I know that there are three and three occurring at these particular indexes and the number of consecutive cards I have to pick is 50 because from zero to 50. Or I can take all the consecutive card between this three and this three. So the number of cards I've taken is 20. So I just have to ensure that I have all the occurrences of particular number. So for that, what you can do is that you can make a map and for that map, you can store for every integer, a vector or like an array of integer at which position every, this particular number is existing. So what you can actually do is that you can use a map, iterate over this particular array from left to right. Whenever you see three, you can see that, okay, I have three. So you will insert the index of three in this map. So I, how it is inserted, you are, you are inserting like three is there at index zero then it will become at 50 then it comes at 70 and so on and similarly let's say there's five so five is occurring at index one then index let's say five then index 100 so you have all of this these things uh, in the particular order now what you'll have to do here is that in this order you have now all the particular maps ids then you can iterate over every possible number that okay for three because it is already sorted out. What is the difference between these two different between these two and whatever is the minimum dis difference, you can just print out the answer. And if there is no particular thing that every number is occurring only once. So there is no possible pair of chances occurring. So answer is minus one. So that's the overall logic here. I'll take it down to the code part. So I've made a map of integer to a vector. Okay. Then I will take away all the cards and push down for every card. their particular indexes. Now we have initialized the minimum difference between two consecutive cards as a very large number and one nine. Then I'm iterating over the map for every map value. We have to concentrate over the vector, like what at what index the particular number is present. So I've just taken out the vector that is I dot second because I dot first is the number and I dot second is the vector. Okay. So I've taken out the vector. Then if the size of this vector is greater than or equal to two, then it is only beneficial to iterate over this vector because if it is only one, which means that it is, there is only one index for that particular card to be present. And we just want a pair. So that is not for our case. So I'll just have to ensure that the vector that I have, it should be should, like that size should be greater than or equal to two. In that case, I will iterate over this vector from the second index. That is I the J equal to one till the end. And I will find out the minimum of the current index with the previous number. So that two positions are there and minimize the answer. So in this scenario, I will just minimize the difference between two consecutive numbers, uh, like wherever they find out. So in the end, if the minimum is equal to this only, which means that I haven't found out a possible pair, the answer is minus one. If I find out the possible pair, the answer is minimum. That's the overall logic for the second problem. Cool. The third problem. The third problem is that K divisible elements subarrays. So you are given an integer array nums and two integers K and P. Okay, fine. Now return the number of distinct subarrays. So you can see that wherever is a dark bolded thing, it is like important. So distinct subarrays. So you have to find a distinct subarrays which has at most k element divisible by p. So you know what is subarrays. So if I have the, uh, let's say that if I find out that a number array I have let's say two, three, three, five, nine. What different subarrays? Con like consecutive uh, blocks of arrays. So two is subarray, two, three, two, 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 three, three, two, three, three, five, or maybe three, five, three, five, nine. So consecutive blocks of arrays is like a sub subarray is uh, like the subarrays, addition subarrays. Now you have to just ensure that at most k elements are there in that subarray that you pick up that are visible by p. Okay. So in this example or in this problem, actually, if you go over the ex explanation, it will become more clear to you. So what they have done here is that they have find out first that I have to find out sub arrays of such that or in those sub arrays, the number of 
divisible element should be less than or equal to two. And the number that should be divisible by is P equal to two. So like I have to find out sub arrays such that the sub arrays has like should have number of elements divisible by two less than or equal to two. So what they have done is that you have first find out how many elements are divisible by P. So they have found that okay, which is two. So they have three elements that are divisible by P that are zero, like zero index, three third index and fourth index. So they have find out three elements, which means that I have to somehow form sub arrays such that I should be taking only two elements, like at most two elements among all the possible elements that are divisible by P that we have. Okay. So what they have find out that, that, that there are, so how many sub arrays you can form? So the array sub arrays, if you want to find out order sub arrays, it is such that starting from every i index, take all the elements in all the direction. So in the right hand direction. So the sub arrays can be two, two, three, two, three, three, two, three, 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 two, two, three, three, two, two, and so on. And then starting from three, so three, 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 two, three, three, two, two, and so on. So these are sub arrays. And what they've done is that they have keep track of how many, because they want at most K number of elements in this sub array that are like that are underlined. So they have to keep track of how many elements are there. So you just have to put some, some sort of a variable that is keep track of how many variables, like how many divisible elements are there. So the, so you will just move your sub array. So this element is taken. So two, that is fine. Now two, three, that is fine. Two, three, three, that is fine. Now, if you take out two, three, three, two, that is also fine because the number of divisible elements in this particular sub array is still less than equal to K. Now, if you take out two, three, three, two, two. Now in this case, the number of divisible element is equal to three. That is wrong. So I will not take that. So I will only take this. Now starting from three, so three, then three, three, then three, three, two, then three, three, two, two, and so on. So they're like uh, storing out all of them. But as you can see that they, they want distant sub array. So for distant, when I have distant, uh, written here, you can use a set because you can store all these possible sub arrays inside the set and set will keep track of if they had a copy of sub arrays, like it, it will automatically read it out. That's the overall logic here that you have to just use this overall logic here because the constraint is very small. So like it will uh, like uh, work fine here. So what I've done here is that I made a set of vectors, like then iterating over every vector. This is T. Okay. And this is a temporary vector. Now T will actually ensure that how many total number of elements we have taken. Okay. Then what we will do is that we'll iterate over every element. And then for every element, what we are doing here is that for if the particular element is divisible by P, we are like incrementing the count of T. If T is less than equal to K, the number of elements we want, then it is fine. We will push that particular element inside a temporary vector and push that temporary vector into the set. So it's just like for every sub array that we are building out, we are just checking out how many total number of elements inside the sub array that we have that are divisible by K. No, sorry, P. And if it is inbound, that is less than or equal to K, then we're just inserting that particular sub array inside the set. In the end, the answer is that the, what is the size of the set and that's a particular answer. So that's the overall uh, logic here, nothing too much difficult here as well. And moving down to the last, uh, last equation. So, okay, what I'll do is that I'll make a separate video of it. Uh, so I'll only explain the first three problems here. In the next video, I'll talk about the fourth problem. So thank you for watching this video till the end. I will see you next time. Thank you for recording and bye.